What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, we're here at the Nerd Castle with the next episode of Child of Light. I look forward to playing the game with you all. In this episode, we finally made it back. This is the guy that was the crow that was standing by the cart. I flew over here without it on camera so I wouldn't waste your guys' time. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to talk to him. Blast it, no. Where did my shovel go? So he wants a shovel. So what we want to do, I bet he gives you the lantern is sparkling. So I bet when you get the shovel, this is probably going to be like a little... Zelda S trading game basically. So we need to find a shovel. I don't know where we're gonna find that at. We'll take a look. But I don't think it's anywhere over here. Instead, I would suggest that we should probably go check in the village at one of the tool stores, maybe, or something. It didn't give us an official quest to handle this, so you never know. On here we've got a, another level up for what's her name? Nora. What's her name? Nora, there we go. Nora. And so Nora has now leveled up one more time, giving her the ability to do something and be more awesome. I wanted to take a look at these tourmalines. What do these tourmalines do? They increase your magic by 4. Magical damage by 10%. Attacks have a 10% chance to cause paralysis for 3 seconds. Oh, wow. It's actually quite good. Kind of depends if you're a fast character, though. If you're a really fast character, that's a great ability to have. But if you're slower, it's kind of like, eh. I think in this case, I'll probably leave things where they're at. Not really going to help her that much. Mm, I don't want to do that. Let's go back, and I'm going to go to my map, and let's teleport back to where we were for a little bit. We'll go to the Kapili village. And once we're here, let's have a look around for a shovel or anything that might be useful to that other guy. I don't know if we'll find it here, but I wasn't I wasn't like particularly looking for it in the past when we were at this location. So there's a real crow. That or somebody that got really, really unlucky and didn't turn back after the curse was lifted. That guy looks so grumpy to be fishing. Is it just me? Like, he looks really, really grumpy to be fishing. I'm pretty stoked when I'm fishing. It means I just get to sit there and like drink beer and listen to the radio for a couple hours and just like be lazy all day. I mean, I don't really enjoy fishing that much, but at the same time, it's better than, like, being at work, for example. Well, I suppose we'll head back to where we came from. Hopefully nothing respawned over here. I forgot about that little guy who's hiding in the bushes, so unfortunately I won't get to murder him today. Lucky for you, little guy. Oh, there's a coffer hidden right here. We were able to drop through the floor for a healing tonic, which is good, because we could definitely use it. I probably, I think we should probably fight a couple battles in here. With how badly the fights went in the last ep episode, I'm really kind of feeling as though we need to like square away that XP and make sure that we're in a spot where we can unleash the pain on people that decide to get in our way. I'm going to swap Finn back in. He's actually probably my favorite character. Running double DPS in this game seems to be a really good plan, especially since the majority of the time you end up with like, you end up with the advantage in most of your fights. And so it becomes very, very useful in the sense that you can usually one-shot somebody at the outset of the fight and make sure that nothing else terrible happens. It basically gives you an advantage right off the bat, which is a very, very good thing for us. I'm just going to go for default attacks here. And we are going to take a numbing bite. Nothing to worry about right there, though, because it's just a, a deboof. And I think what I'll do is we will just continue to attack over here. I'm going to keep an eye on him just in case he makes a dash for it once he hits the cast meter right there, but... I don't think that he will. Instead, he is going to be struck down. He will be beaten. Beaten and bloodied by a little girl and her 13-year-old bearded friend. Another rough ruby right there. And for today, we should continue to head left until we hit the next storyline element. I don't really think we have that many things to handle anymore, so it should be okay. I don't think we're going to make it all the way before the... Rock farts start back up and get us trapped against a wall here. Be like, why are these? Why is this so smelly? I'd be like, I have no idea. Sulfur is a crazy, crazy thing. I mean, the Earth is kind of yellowish here. That's usually a pretty good indicator that there's sulfur around. Head back to the plains. I probably could have teleported here. That was mis that was a mistake on my part. But at least we got to fight an extra battle. Maybe, maybe I don't know. It could have just been a mistake. I'm just trying to give you alternative options. I mean, you could think about it as a mistake, or we could think about it as, like, extra XP that we managed to accrue while we were here.
now that we're back in the forest, I don't think that there was anything up top that we wanted to worry about. Last I remember, we had dropped a rather large crate on a switch up here in the interest of finding ourselves a leftward expansion. I was going to say, it looked like there was a cave right here. And so we've gotten two more rough sapphires. There's no cave right there. I've noticed that they give you a treasure count on all the maps. I noticed that in the last episode. There we go. We'll blind him and we'll take a swing at him. He's only got two of these little supporting guys right here, but we want to be very careful because as we learned in the previous episode, they do use hasting magic and hasting magic was actually really really detrimental to us as we were playing last time so I prefer to get rid of them early rather than later so the first one is now down the second one is soon to be and so there it is 55 vulnerable to fire luckily they have the HP pools of a goldfish so it's really not that difficult to take them out I don't know if we're gonna get this attack off in time we can try yeah there it is bring it home Finn watch he's gonna miss now and I'm just like ah Finn damn you I went from loving you to hating you. It's like every relationship I've ever had. Why, Finn? Why? And so he's given a toss right there. And put 45 damage right upside the dome of our red-haired lass. I'm going to throw out another knock. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time getting her HP back up. Because I don't feel like doing it with restoratives. Simply based on the fact that we don't have any left. So we're going to kind of need to be careful about that. Gather myself up some wishes. Finn's going to be able to outrun him as far as I know with his knock ability. And so there it is. We got ourselves the KO. And a level up for everybody involved in the fight. And maybe even people that are in the back lines if you're really lucky. Nope, just another rough ruby. So instead, I think what I'd like to do right now is let's play around with the Oculus a little bit and see what kind of... Ooh, wrong click right there. What kind of stuff can we make? I mean, obviously we can make like a green one right here. I'm sorry, a purple one. We already have a purple one. Can we do anything with the tourmalines, though? suppose we'll just make another tumbled sapphire. Turn that into a faceted tourmaline, because why not? That's not a combination that it's going to accept. Well... 15% to oh God, that's getting better and better and better. I am thinking it might be a good idea since Rubella is really, really fast to maybe put that on her and see if she can use that a little bit better than anybody else. And if we can get com like, like that combined up to like the next tier, it would be even better. I think with her skill point, go for another defense upgrade. Sure, why not? She takes a beating every single round. We might as well. We're here. We're going to continue moving towards heal all. With Finn, I think we'll continue forward. We'll take the defense upgrade because I'd like to get him to some form of AoE that he can use in the case that we have enemies that are, I mean, we don't get lucky like that very often where we have a homogenous force of enemies who are all weak to the same things. But we can hope that one day it happens, and once it does, we may get to use that ability once or twice. I don't know if there's a cave back up in here, but there might be. Let's get some MP back, because I know we expended a little bit back there. And I think we've searched this map already, so I'm not going to consider... Is that gate closed again? No, it's open. We're good. We've already gotten that treasure. Over here is where we had dropped the block off, as I recall. And it stays dropped off. That's good. I find that to be a friendly change. And so let me make a look around. Now that I know there's caves in these little walls and things, I should probably take a look around and be sure that I'm not screwing this up. That's obviously going to stop all that from happening. The wheel over here only has one gap in it. I'm going to go left first, and there's an HP Stardust that we've picked up. And a door. I don't necessarily know where this is leading. However, girl's so hot she's on fire. There's a defense stardust. I don't know if this is just going to be an extra treasure trove or something. Two defensive elixirs. It looks like it is going to be one of those, as we said previously. Drop through the floor here and see what else we can find. Potent healing tonics. Good. A 
few more rough sapphires. And this appears to be spiny. So I'm going to think that I probably don't want to get rammed up into that. Two more defense elixirs. Not sure how useful those are going to be in the future. Let me blind the enemy to get at some of this stuff. Let's fight her just to find out. Ooh, it's a big force. Okay, well, my guess is that Monsoon is going to be really useful here. So I'm going to swap her out for her sister because as I recall, I gave Nora water elemental attacks. I did. However, she's kind of weak, so it's not really going to be effective. Let's see what attacks go off right here. We've got Shrivel. I don't know if it's going to be worthwhile to try and get another attack off. Let's go ahead and heal her up slightly. Oh good, we're getting five now. I don't know what controls how much HP you get. I assume it's like tied to the character level. Although we're also getting a little less bush here. Which is disappointing. The bush of wishes. I don't think I want anything from the bush of wishes. I think the bush of wishes to like keep its hands to itself. What do you guys think? Should we try it? Let's try knock. I know he casts knock pretty quickly. There we go. So that'll allow us to take the front and center stage. Ooh, wow. A critical hit right there from our little non-melee warrior doing a lot of damage. And she's still not down. Whew, she's hanging in there. Tosses out. Going to do a fair bit of damage, as I recall, most of the time. He's using fire elemental damage, so it's almost a waste to have him take a swing right here. Instead, what I think I would rather do... I'm not confident enough in my skills to keep both of them slowed down to where I think I can get a cast off. Let's just go for a knock on the big dude. It'll probably work out okay. Have her defend one more time. Burning Whale goes out. Luckily we put armor on people. We're going to get a double AoE right here. Let me slow him down slightly because I don't want him anywhere near this next resolution. She's now paralyzed. I'm gonna have him throw a monsoon on the one in the back because I really do feel like it's kind of a waste to have a big cast on him. I'm gonna go for the kill right there. We have the counter going on already over there. Okay, so there it is. We finally managed to take him out. So Toss is off, and it looks like our dear bearded friend is hurting a little bit. And in fact, he's now quite dead. He's been afflicted with a case of the deadness. I am going to put in Aurora. And while we're here, let's go ahead and we're going to focus on the giant for now since everybody else is using attacks which aren't necessarily so conducive to damaging fire elementals. Have her go on defense. And there it is. We got a nice little block off. No, not you. You. Come on. It's going to be really, really close. There it is. So we got it. Is it a kill, though? It's not a kill. It is an interrupt, however. And he's now down. So let's go ahead and chain stun her if we can. Or, I'm sorry, chain. Ah, so close. So close. Luckily, she hit the wrong person, so it's not that big of a deal. And then we got a paralysis off, which is always good for us. Let me see what happens. I think you just get resistant to fire. It's not going to heal or anything, so that's okay. With seven damage, we managed to kill it off. But what do you know? Who's going to level up? Huh? Now, does Finn remain dead? How delightful, a carnival jester. Not yet. I'm on my way to a circus nearby. And how strong you are. I bet you could raise a real lady high. 
Show me one and I'll make an attempt. She means try. And does he stay knocked out? Or is he good? Oh, he revives at 1 HP, so we'll probably want to sit here for a couple seconds and ensure that our dear friend at least has a little bit of HP to go into the next combat. Everybody else is a tiny bit depleted anyway, so we may as well try. So we're trapped in a box here. But we did flip a switch, so hopefully that assists us in the future. Dodge that one completely and totally by luck. There's another door down here that we'll remain aware of. And we're probably looking for a leftward path here. Another chest right there, which is going to gift us with some greenies. Because we're full up on wishes again, I'm going to sit here and heal for a minute. I get in there. There we go. I knew there was a way. There's way too much treasure down here for us to abandon whatever this little cave is. In fact, I don't know if this is where we're supposed to be going, but we're going to hang out and check it out. Let me see how Finn's doing right now. How you looking, man? 70? Okay, still not looking so great. Let me see if that's actually... Is that affecting everyone, or is it only if she's wounded? Oh, it's still healing everybody. Okay. Well, then I'll go ahead and use, since we're about to tap into that bush of wishes one more time, I'll deplete my entire bar here. Couple of rough sapphires, alright. I'm actually sort of interested in trying out some of those white gems over there, so if we can get enough to make a white gem, I'd like to see what they do, and just see if it's worth it to start throwing a couple of them together. Another bar of wishes gone, and he's sitting at 147. Alright, that's totally fine, that's acceptable. So over here... I do want to try a diamond. Let's see what a diamond does. And so taking a look at it, in the attack slot it increases your speed by one. In the defensive slot it gives you more XP. And in the optional slot it increases your casting speed. I think it has the potential to be useful. If you could get enough of them trained up. How much was it over here? One? I don't know how much one affects your ability to move along the casting time bar or along the active battle system, whatever you want to call it. However, I can only assume that once you get up that, that at the top tier, it probably gives you about four or something like that. So, I don't know. I have really no idea. I'm going to go ahead and allocate... Her skill point to she can either get a crit upgrade or she can get a. I prefer to move more towards any of her nearest strength upgrades. So maybe lull all seems like it might be really useful though too. Let's go for lull all. We'll see if we can get lull all, and it's a nice way to try and cancel out. I mean, I can't guarantee you're ever going to get that ability to work before you get interrupted, just based on the fact that if somebody's hasted and you're trying to lull them, it's very, very difficult to get ahead. We've also got a magic stardust right here. It's going to give a magic boost. I'm actually going to start piling these onto Finn, so that he just becomes like a ridiculous juggernaut glass cannon. Got an HP stardust. Let's have a look through and see... Who needs HP the worst? She does. Okay, so we'll give her HP. And then we've also got a Defense Stardust. Who needs that the worst? Finn. So we'll give it to him. There it is. Oh, we had two of them. Okay. That's fine. And so that allows Finn to take a little bit more damage before he gets himself wiped out. I think I'm going to break the episode off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me at the Nerd Castle for another episode of Child of Light. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye, guys.